Hello everyone, now let us discuss about 2023 ICD 10CM coding guidelines for chapter 9 that is diseases of circulatory system part 5. In the current session we will be discussing the guidelines regarding the intraoperative and postoperative procedural cerebrovascular accident and sequel A of cerebrovascular accident. By this we will complete the guidelines for chapter 9. Now coming to intraoperative and post procedural cerebrovascular accident. In order to quote these quotes, the medical record documentation should clearly specify the cause and effect relationship. It should clearly specify the cause and effect relationship between the medical intervention that is particular procedure and the cerebrovascular accident that is the cerebrovascular accident must result from that procedure. Then only you can quote the intraoperative cerebrovascular accident or post procedural cerebrovascular accident codes. Proper code assignment depends on whether it was an infraction or hemorrhage or whether it occurred intraoperatively or post operatively. And if it was, if it was a cerebral hemorrhage, code assignment depends on the type of procedure performed. So these are the points that must be taken into consideration. It depends on whether it is an infraction or hemorrhage. Cerebrovascular accident can be an infraction or a hemorrhage or whether it has occurred intraoperatively that is during the procedure or after the completion of the procedure that is postoperatively. If it was a cerebral hemorrhage, it is further categorized based upon the type of procedure performed. These are the points that must be taken into consideration while we are assigning the codes. Now coming to the various categories of cerebrovascular accident, the subseries or category I60 to I62, it deals with non-traumatic intracranial hemorrhage. Whereas the category I63, it deals with cerebral infractions. And the categories I65 to I66, they deal with occlusion and stenosis of pre-cerebral and cerebral arteries not resulting in infraction. Next, I67 to I68, it deals with other cerebrovascular diseases. And finally, I69 series, they deal with the sequelae of cerebrovascular diseases. That is the late effect. We have separate guidelines for sequelae also that we will discuss in the current session. And whenever we are coding the cerebrovascular diseases that come under the category I60 to I69, whenever we are coding these codes, you need to use additional code. You need to use the additional code to identify the presence of alcohol abuse and dependence which is given by the subcategory F10 and exposure to environmental tobacco smoke given by the code Z77.22 history of tobacco dependence given by the code Z87.891 and hypertension codes which come under the category I10 to I16 occupational exposure to environmental tobacco smoke given by the code Z57.31, tobacco dependence given by the category F17 series and tobacco use given by Z72.0 code. These are the additional conditions that must be coded in addition to cerebrovascular diseases. Whenever we are coding the cerebrovascular disease, if the person, if the patient has any of these conditions, you need to code them additionally and here you have excludes one node that is you cannot code together i60 to i69 series with s06 these are non-traumatic you cannot code traumatic intracranial hemorrhage along with cerebrovascular accidents because cerebrovascular accidents are non-traumatic hence it is indicated by excludes one excludes one node means you cannot code these two conditions together now let us see an example. A cardiologist performed an aortic valve replacement on a patient with severe aortic valve stenosis and the patient had a history of atrial fibrillation and has been on anticoagulation therapy which was discontinued according to the guidelines because he was performing a procedure. The physician, dis uh, physician asked the patient to discontinue the anticoagulation therapy. And during the procedure, cardiologist documented there was a sudden drop 
during the procedure the cardiologist documented that there was a sudden drop in the patient's blood pressure and hemodynamic instability cardiologist discontinued the procedure which he stated in the report was due to an intraoperative cerebrovascular infraction here the physician the provider is documenting a cause and effect relationship between the procedure and the cerebrovascular accident that he said that it is an intraoperative cerebral va cerebral vascular infraction that has occurred during a cardiovascular surgery cardiac surgery so the appropriate code is i97.810 intraoperative cerebrovascular infraction during a cardiac surgery now coming to the next final guideline that is sequelae of cerebrovascular diseases and whenever we are coding the sequelae of cerebrovascular diseases there are three categories that must be taken into consideration or the guidelines are categorized into three types the first one is guidelines regarding the category i69 sequelae of cerebrovascular disease next codes from category i69 with codes from i60 to i67 what are we supposed to do when we need to codes from i69 and i60 to 67 together the next guideline is codes from the category i69 and personal history of trans transient ischemic attack that is tia and cerebral infraction z86.73 now coming to the category i69 sequelae of cerebrovascular diseases the category i69 is used to indicate conditions i69 is used to indicate that conditions classifiable to categories i60 to i67 there are certain conditions that come under the categories i60 to i67 but if these category these condition if they occur as a late effect or as a cause of sequelae then you need to code i69 series the category i69 is used to indicate conditions classifiable to categories i60 to i67 as a cause of sequelae that is neurological deficits themselves classified elsewhere and these late effects include neurological defi deficits that are persistent late effect means that are that remain or that are persistent after the initial onset of conditions that are classifiable to i60 to i67 and the neurological deficits caused by cerebrovascular disease may be present from the onset or may arise at any time it may be present from the beginning or may arise at any time after the onset of the condition that is classifiable to i60 to i67 now codes from the category i69 that is nothing but the sequelae of cerebrovascular diseases that specify hemiplegia hemiplegia hemiparesis and monoplegia they identify whether dominant or non dominant side is affected these codes they are categorized based upon separate codes for dominant side non dominant side in such way and should the affected side be documented that is whether for example patient is having hemiparesis and he described left lower leg hemiparesis here the site is documented but not specified as dominant or non dominant here the site is documented but it is not specified as dominant and non dominant then the classification system does not indicate a default code whether it is not specified as dominant and non dominant there are certain guidelines to which side you need to code dominant and which side you should not code dominant it is as follows for ex for the category is i69 for ambidextrous patients the patients who are ambidextrous the default should be dominant if the right side is affected or the left side is affected because ambidextrous means they are capable of using both hands with equal dexterity ambi means to ambidextrous means he can you that particular patient can use both hands right hand and left hand with equal ease in that case the default should be dominant if the left side is affected you need to code left dominant if the right side is affected you need to code right dominant for ambidextrous patients and in general if the left side is affected 
generally we are considered as people as right handed. If the left side is affected, the default is non-dominant. Non-dominant left side of that particular sequence. If the left side is affected, you need to code the default code as non-dominant. And if the right side is affected, by default you need to code dominant. For ambidextrous patient, both sides you need to code dominant only. And in general, if the patient is not specified whether he is ambidextrous or not, if the left side is affected, you need to code non-dominant by default. And if the right side is affected, you need to code dominant by default. Let us see an example. A patient is seen today with a history of stroke 10 years ago. And the patient has residual left side hemiplegia. The patient had a history of stroke 10 years ago and the patient has residual left side hemiplegia as a result and is being followed by neurology. Below is the correct code assessment for the patient's condition. Here left side hemiplegia. They did not document whether it is dominant or non-dominant and the patient is also not ambidextrous. So by default you need to code non-dominant for left side hemiplegia. So the appropriate code is I69.354 hemiplegia and hemiparesis following cerebral infraction affecting left non-dominant side. Hemiplegia and hemiparesis following cerebral infraction affecting left non-dominant side. So whenever left side is affected by default you need to code non-dominant. Whenever right side is affected by default you need to code dominant. And for ambient excess patient by default you need to code dominant. Let us see one more example. Patient present with a previous history of non-traumatic intracerebral hemorrhage with a residual hemiplegia. Here also residual hemiplegia affecting right side. Because the documentation does not clearly specify the right side is dominant or non-dominant, by default you need to code dominant. So the correct code for this scenario is I69.151, hemiplegia and hemiparesis following non-traumatic intracerebral hemorrhage affecting right dominant side. Right dominant side. Now let us see a couple of more examples. Patient presents with a history of cerebral infraction with residual monoplegia of lower limb affecting the left side. Left side means non-dominant. Appropriate code is I69.344. Monoplegia of lower limb following cerebral infraction affecting left dominant side. Now let us see ambidextrous patient. Ambidextrous patient presents with a history of non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage with residual hemiplegia affecting the left side. Generally left side means we are coding non-dominant. But for ambidextrous patient, whether right side is affected or left side is affected, by default you need to code dominant. So the appropriate code is I69.052. Hemiplegia and hemiparesis following non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage affecting left dominant side. Now let us see the next guideline. Whether we have to code codes from the category I69 with codes from the categories I60 to I67. So the guideline is codes from the category I69 may be assigned on a healthcare record with the codes from I60 to I67. That is you can code in conjunction with these codes. If the patient has a current cerebrovascular disease and deficits from an old cerebrovascular accident. He need to have a sequelae, late effect and also if he has a current cerebrovascular disease, then you can quotes, quote quotes from the category I69 and I60 to 67 together. Let us see an example. Patient was admitted status post CVA, cerebrovascular accident due to thrombosis of an unknown cerebral artery one week ago. One week ago, he is having a new current cerebrovascular disease and had a history, patient had a history of CVA with left hemiparesis. This is a late effect. He presents with left side hemiparesis and, and is right handed. Patient is right handed. 
below is the correct what is the correct code the patient the reason for admission is status post cva due to thrombosis of an unknown cerebral artery one week ago this is the reason for visit so first the co code should be i63.30 cerebral infraction due to thrombosis of unspecified cerebral artery next he is having a late effect i69.354 left side hemiparesis and the patient is right handed so you need to code non dominant for left side hemiparesis appropriate code is i69.354 hemiplegia and hemiparesis following cerebral infraction affecting left dominant left non dominant side so you can code together i63.30 and i69.354 provided if the patient has a current cerebrovascular disease and deficits from a old cerebrovascular disease now let us see the final guideline codes from the category i69 and the personal history of transient ischemic attack ti and cerebral infraction which is given by the code z86.73 the guideline is codes from the category i69 should not be assigned codes from the category i69 should not be assigned if the patient does not have any neurological deficits that is you cannot code together i69 and z86.73 together let us see an example patient presents with a history of cerebral infraction she has residual dysphasia and that is and she is being treated with neurology here a patient had a history so you should not code the history code because she is having residual dysphasia and that is and she is undergoing treatment for that appropriate code should be i69.321 dysphasia following cerebral infraction let us see one more example patient has a personal history of stroke patient has a personal history of stroke with no residual effects so the appropriate code is here patient is not having any residual effects so you can code only history code z86.73 personal history of transient ischemic attack and cerebral infraction without residual defects deficits by this we complete the guidelines for chapter 9 that is diseases of circulatory system thank you for watching please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and cpc training